Awesome. Well, we'll jump right into it. I got a lot of uh, updates for modified bases uh, in Nanopore Signal here. Um, so quick overview, we're going to have an intro of mods in, our, in uh, Nanopore Signal, uh, a couple of the data types that we use internally and, and how we generate these modified base models. Uh, so I'll go through those different data types, the production models, um, and then sort of what's next with all context modified and more exotic modified bases, and an, an update to Remora uh, that we just pushed yesterday. All right, so a quick introduction. I don't want to spend too much time here, but uh, Nanopore, as most of you in this room know, uh, allows the identification of methylation from the standard data. There's no additional steps required. The data is in your signal. It's just a matter of getting it out accurately, which is what I'll go through in this talk. Uh, and you get all the other benefits of Nanopore sequencing unlimited length and phasing, which is really useful in, in methylation. I won't go into. We'll go, uh, the applications talk in the next session is actually going to go into some of that, which will be really nice to see. Um, the, uh, importantly, Nanopore doesn't, as I said, require any additional treatment. Uh, traditionally, we've looked at 5-MC and, and 5-HMC but by sulfite, um, and that's really harsh, harmful to the DNA, and any of your errors that you get are actually at the enzymatic step, so they can't be corrected. In Nanopore signaling, you just pass your native data in, and base calls come out with the modified bases attached to them. There's nothing extra that has to be done, so it's a, a huge advantage there. So quickly, the algorithms that we developed and released about a year ago is there's this Remora al algorithm. So Remora, also called the sucker fish, is a latches on to larger aquatic creatures. Uh, they have different roles in cleaning and protecting, and very little drag feeds off the host. Similarly, the Remora algorithm latches on to the nanopore base caller. Uh, it has different tasks of calling modified and base calls, and it doesn't add very much time. And as uh, Mike went into, it, it, it has gotten a lot better recently. So how does uh, Remora actually work internally? So at the top here, you see a full read of signal. Um, and we pick out little bits of signal around motifs of interest. So for our main models right now, this is the CG motif. So you grab the bit of signal, and then the move table and the base calls that come from the base caller. So you're taking these outputs from the base caller and passing these through a neural network to make predictions of a modified base or not. All right, so real quick, I want to go over the modified base types that we use. Uh, so there's these five base type, types of modified base, types of samples that we use for modified bases here. So I'll first go into the biologically derived ones. So native samples are what we target. That is what we want to do the best on. Um, but they're very hard for training and evaluation. They don't, they, they don't have, they have mixed modified base content, and they have no concrete ground truth. Uh, I'll show you here, that I'll be showing a lot of these IV, IGV plots here, the red, uh, red uh, colors here are modified bases and 5MC, and the blue is the uh, canonical C. Um, so we'll see a lot of these plots through through the plot, so that give a little intro there. Uh, so the second one is the second strand doping. So we uh, this is a sample where we dope in a sample, so it comes in all the context, but we don't know where they are on each strand. It's useful to see the modified base in a ton of context, but again, it's tricky for, for training modified bases. Uh, and finally, on the right is the enzymatic model. So this is where you treat a sample with an enzyme. Usually you start with a PCR, and you see that we have one sample that's completely C, another one that's completely 5MC here. Um, the problem is that it's very hard to expand this to new modified bases. So you have to have en enzymes that come from nature, and so it, it's hard to expand these. But they're incredibly useful for the models that we've trained so far. Um, on the, on the uh, right here is the ground truth oligonucleotides. Um, so these are just a great validation sample. So we have a really concrete ground truth. We don't have to compare it to any other technology. We know that every base is modified or every base is canonical, and this is what we base most of our accuracy metrics on. On the right here is our primary all-context training sample. So you're showing, seeing an IGV sample showing the canonical base content here, where we print these bases with random bases with a fixed position in the center there, you can see call to C, um, where we put a modified base or a canonical. And these are really great because we can get all contexts into training, um, but we don't know the sequence of each strand. So we use the duplex methods to get that. Go into a bit of that in a minute. All right, so this is a really exciting result that we've just released uh, the 5MC plus 5HMC model uh, in CG context. Um, and this is really in the top corner. This is sort of three views of the accuracy of 5MC and 5HMC here. Um, on the top right is the, the, the per read per site accuracy. So this is not aggregated across reads. This is one site in one read. This is the accuracy of the calls um, that you get. Uh, and this is in CG context. And so on the bottom here is an IGV plot. We've shown the HMC strands. Uh, so every one of those sites shown there should be an HMC. And you can see the per read calls in, in orange there. 
really good accuracy. The same for 5-HMC printed strands and canonical strands. You can see that if you look at the IGV plots, we're really getting amazing accuracy with this model. Uh, sort of shown in a similar way with the distribution across these different sites, um, what, your, what your Q accuracy is for the three different sort of printed strands there. Um, as I said, it's really impressive accuracy that we're really excited about this model. Um, and it even works quite well. So that, that strand on the last slide you could see was four modified bases spread out. Um, even if you print a much harder strand with 5MC and 6MA on the top, for, sorry, 5MC and HMC uh, printed right next to each other, you get quite good accuracy. Um, so the other thing, those, those uh, accuracy numbers from the previous slide were uh, what we call filtered accuracy. So we chop out the most uncertain calls in the middle. These have been, these are generally unbiased, um, and but we get a big bump in improvement. Again, like by sulfite, you can't, there's no threshold. The enzyme either converts it or doesn't, and you, you can't uh, do anything later on to fix it. So when we apply those thresholds, you, you get rid of a lot of the missed calls here as well. But we see really good performance there. Uh, finally, you can run that 5MC, HMC model as a single model and then collapse. If you, if you want to compare it to bisulfite or do something that you wanted to see only 5MC, you can collapse the 5MC, HMC calls into one and get the same accuracy that we were getting with our previous flagship model, which was the 5MC only model. So we will, we're pushing forward to running one Remora model as the model that rules them all. And you can see that we significantly have passed bisulfite sequencing and also are pushing to go away from R9, Kit 10, over to the Kit 14 models where we see really good accuracy on modified bases. Okay, so what's next? Uh, all context modified bases. So I showed this plot, and this is where we've put a ton of effort internally. We have, we've generated uh, over 60 of these types of samples internally uh, to train all of our all context models. Um, and so the idea is that you extract, you, you sequence these, and really you need the duplex accuracy to get enough reads out of this um, to get enough training chunks uh, to really train a good Remora model. So you extract the randomers from the duplex uh, extract the randomers from the simplex calls, identify duplex pairs, duplex base call these, and Remora data prep. And a lot of the stuff that's gone into all the work from the three previous talks has gone into making this work. So it's a really a testament to all of the talks here um, that this is working so well. And we're targeting a Q1 release for this training, this data processing pipeline to make it so that the community can start doing these, these types of processing uh, without uh, waiting for nanopore. Um, so this 5MC all context model is coming very, very soon. We're seeing very good accuracies from this model. Um, we just need to get this out on the, the latest base callers. Um, there's some improvements on the latest base callers. Uh, so in previously, the, the 5HMC model, we included enzymatic 5HMC model data in that model to get the accuracy better on 5HMC, which improves the modified base calls there. We were working on the same type of thing for 5MC calls uh, to improve the, 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 the um, accuracy here with the second strand doping samples. Um, so yeah, we, we're seeing really good accuracy in the 5MC all context model is coming very, very soon. Um, you can see here that the 5MC all context model, these are, you can't print all contexts, but we print a lot of non-CG contexts um, and we get very good accuracy. Um, 6MA is coming soon. Um, we're ramping up on, as I said, we've produced 60 of these all context samples and we're moving forward um, in 6MA uh, and hoping to release that soon um, as we, as we ramp, really ramp up production of these all context uh, modified base samples. So finally, more exotic modified bases. So we've done a lot of work on more exotic bases at the same time. So ADOXOG and RNA bases in DNA have been our sort of first test cases here. Um, and when you look at modified bases, nature isn't used to these, and a lot of weird stuff happens. So what the one thing we found was that the randomers were actually calling, you can see a lot of yellow orange bases there in the central position, because uh, ADOXOG can base pair to an A in a Hoogstein base pairing, and therefore it was incorporating the wrong base on the opposite strand, and duplex was giving us a bunch of T errors, which are not actually errors, they're likely the sequence that's actually physically present. Um, so we're building the tools around handling these weird things that happen when you look at mods um, to, to make it uh, work better in these cases. Um, so there is extra effort to generate and analyze these samples. Basically, more advanced modified bases are hard, nature doesn't like them, polymerases don't like them, and so there are there is extra effort there, but we're trying to build the tools to, to handle these. 
So finally, I'm going to quickly go over a minute left here uh, the update to, to Remora that we've made. Again, building off of all the amazing work of the, the um, three speakers before me. Uh, so it's available now. Just PFE install Remora. And so I'd sort of separate here. The Remora algorithms are built into Dorado and all of our base callers. And the, the Remora software helps train the models. It's built for more advanced users. But it's sort of it's the same algorithms that underpin both of those. Um, so we've removed the O and an X dependency. Again, we're using PyTorch only, so it's unified with Dorado, so we can really push these things out super quickly. They get into Dorado, and they're high performance right off the bat. Um, so it, it's really big to have that. Um, automatic model download just makes things easier. And the modified base tags from, from uh, the standard format makes things so much easier. Um, and we have inference and validation tools that work directly from those mod BAM formats, uh, and also a simplified API and command line interface. So I'll go into that. Real quick here is that training a model really starts from the pod 5 signal and the base calls. You need to know where your modified bases are there. You either pass a ground truth, you put a data set together, and you're done. You train the model. That's about it. Finally, one, one really uh, exciting feature we have here, as Catherine mentioned, that you can run Remora now uh, to detect modified bases on both strands, so exactly your question. So you get the, the, the uh, modified base format uh, handles that, and we can get, this is an example down here, where you can see this one read with canonical and modified bases right next to each other in the same duplex strand. So it's really powerful. We're so excited to see the modified, the biology that people come with this. Thank you so much.